It says to meditate day and night. That word meditate is kind of interesting. It literally means um, to murmur, to kind of mumble. That's what the etymology of the word is from. And this is not about, okay, I'm going to take a verse and I'm going to say it all day. Blessed is the man who walks not. No, it's not that kind of meditation. It is the idea of kind of ruminating on it, kind of just, just thinking about it all day, all day. Man, I read something this morning, and what does that mean? And now I'm at work and I'm doing something, and wow, you know, this reminds me of, of something I've, I, I know about God. I've, I remember reading about God and just considering so that it doesn't become a, okay, I got my compartmentalized life. I got my, yeah, I read this morning for 10 minutes, and then I prayed for five minutes, and then I drank my coffee, and then I got in the car and went to work. And I took care of that. No, it's about letting that part of the Word of God becomes so infused in such a part of you that it's it's just natural. That you're just you're considering, meditating, considering, thinking on the things of God. Man, that's gonna make you a whole lot happier than thinking about most other things in this world. I'm not saying, you know, ignore reality. You know, I can't think about the fact that you know, whatever. I'm just going to think about Scripture. No, that's that's weird. I'm talking about taking what this is and make it alive in your life. Because it is alive. The Word of God is living. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Able to discern between the thoughts and intents of your heart and my heart. Wow. Why not think about it? Why not consider it? And he says, the result of that is the guy like that, the woman like that, they're going to be like a, like, like, like a tree, like a tree planted right by the river. So there's plenty of water, plenty of nutrients. Yeah. And it's fruit. Well, it's fruitful in its season. And I love that, that it doesn't say it's fruitful all the time. Because you know what I found in my life? I ain't fruitful all the time. There have been seasons of fruitfulness. There have been seasons of, I look like the trees do right now outside in Pennsylvania. Just kind of stark, just kind of sticks coming out of the ground, and I feel like that. Well, that's because God said, well, you're not supposed to have fruit now, you idiot. Your fruitful season is coming up, so just keep drinking in those nutrients. Just keep taking it in, and your time will come. Fruitful in our season, but whose leaf does not wither. We're evergreens. We won't look like the sticks out there. We'll always be full of life and we will bear fruit in the right time. Hmm. Always prosperous. And that's prosperous in the way of prosperity that we learned in the last six weeks studying the book of Job. It's not about cars. It's not about uh, money. It's not about even health. It's prosperity with God. That's the prosperity that comes. And then he makes the contrast. He's gone to, okay, this is what this is what the righteous do and, and, and the happy ones do. And man, they're like a tree by the river. But the wicked, well, they're not like that. If you want to talk about the wicked, well, they're kind of like dust. That's what Kansas was singing about, dust in the wind. They're just dust in the wind, you know? I'm a lot older than you because nobody went, oh, yeah, that Kansas song, yeah, okay, yeah, but, but you're a musician, so that's why. <laughs> Listen to the oldie station and maybe you'll know what I'm talking about. But the, what he's talking about is the chaff and, and the image to the person of the day of the day is that when they would harvest the grain, they would bring it in and put it out on the threshing floor, which was not necessarily a floor in a building. It usually was not. It was usually a flat place with stones or, or stamped down dirt on the top of a hill where there was some wind coming through. Otherwise, they had to have people with fans to cause a breeze to come. And basically what they would do is they would bring the grain in and dump it there and then either stomp it themselves or get some animals or they would get uh, this kind of like little plow thing, kind of a 
big stone that's drawn by uh, cattle and they kind of go around and s basically smash down all the grain in order to separate the good part from the bad part. And the bad part was just the, the hull, the, the, you know, the kind of flaky stuff on the outside. And of course the good stuff is, is, that, is that germ, is that, is that seed. And once they separated that, once they separated that in this big pile, they're all mixed up in the pile, but they're separated physically so that they're not stuck to each other. Then they would take big pitchforks and stick them in and throw it up, stick it in and throw it up. And just because of the nature of physics and gravity, the heavier thing would drop and the lighter thing would be carried on the wind or the, the breeze that they're causing by the winnowing fans and would blow away. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, look, what do you want to be? You want to be a tree by the river? Fruitful? Always prosperous? Or do you want to be like that little, that little fleck of dust that just kind of, where it goes? That's the difference. It's that big a difference. It's that big a difference. And that's why they will not stand in the judgment. And what that means is they will not stand in the judgment. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it because they have chosen not to surrender to Jesus Christ and follow his ways, but instead have followed their own ways or the counsel of the ungodly or hanging out with the sinners, sitting around mocking. And there's, there's a path. You take it one way or the other. And they're different destinations. It will not join in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is a great psalm. I love this psalm. Because if you take nothing out of the psalms but this one, man, you've got it. This is it. This is a foundation. This is a foundation. Jesus said it like this after what is termed the Sermon on the Mount. At the end of it, he said, look, the smart guy will listen to what I said and build on it like a solid foundation. The stupid guy, and that's the Malin translation, the stupid guy just builds his house on the sand. And when the storm comes, which of those two houses will survive? Part of what we're seeing now in Chile versus Haiti, you could, you could use that same analogy. They're saying like, so many of the buildings in Chile were not damaged because they were built with certain foundations and, you know, hurricane or earthquake proof kind of thing. As opposed to in Haiti, they were not. And the storm came. And you see the destruction of one and not as much of the other. And that's the difference between setting, building your foundation on the words of Christ or building your foundation on the counsel of the ungodly. It's like a tree and a piece of dust in the wind. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed or could be against his Messiah saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord shall not shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Interestingly, there are some of the ancient manuscripts that combine Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 into one psalm. Uh, and some scholars think that it, it is one psalm. Who cares? Um, most believe it is two separate ones because of the, uh, the nature of them and most of the manuscripts, etc., etc. But 
Psalm 2 is the psalm of the king. It's a coronation psalm. It's speaking about the Davidic kingship. And we have to think about something with respect to the Davidic kingship. It's not just about David. Keep your finger there in the Psalms and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7. 